Hey, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to the Hanging on to Hope podcast. I'm Brenda J. And I'm Karen Wonder. And we are HangingOnToHope.org. This podcast is intended as educational and is not psychological or medical advice. Always consult a professional when needed, and we disclaim any liability in connection with the instruction, information, or advice given. Hello, and welcome to the Hanging on to Hope podcast. This is Karen W. Today, we have Sarah Chesterfield on the podcast. Sarah is a menopause coaching specialist. She has a master's degree in educational counseling and is also a wellness and nutrition coach. A certified yoga and is it Quagong? Quagong. Okay. <laughs> instructor <laughs> and co-founder of the Retreat Ladies with Don Hopkins, who is my yoga instructor. So welcome to the podcast, Sarah. Well, thank you. It's an honor. It's an absolute honor to be here with you. Well, we're excited about this conversation. So I've been wanting to have a podcast to discuss menopause since I personally went through a health crisis that involved menopause after I went through a traumatic and stressful season with my dad's aggressive cancer diagnosis. He passed away in March after being diagnosed five months earlier. It affected so much of my life, my ability to function well at work, sleep, exercise, mental health. So just to get started, can you share your experience, which was part of what led you to get your menopause coaching degree? Well, first of all, I'm so very sorry about your loss. Every loss is unique and different. And I'm very sorry for that. Thank you. Well, my health story, I didn't want to have a health story, first of all. (laughs) I never wanted to have a health story. I always took care of myself. But the morning before Mother's Day in 2022, I woke up in the middle of the night with pain in my left arm, stiffness, I had a hard time breathing, I felt like somebody was sitting on my chest. And I woke my husband up and he freaked out because I'm the calm one. I'm never sick. Nothing's ever wrong. And I've never woken him up in the middle of the night saying, I think there's something wrong with me. He took me to an emergency room and they wheeled me right in. I guess I was white. And The test came back okay. So I called it a cardiac incident. And the problem was they sent me to a cardiologist who was a man who put me on some very strong medication and basically told me to stop eating crappy food, to stop drinking wine and martinis with dirty martinis with lots of olives. He told me to stop eating chips and snack cakes and to exercise. And I walked out of there with apparently a look on my face because my husband is in the waiting room saying, we need to get out of here really fast. Yeah. And so that led me to another cardiologist. And ladies, I just, I just want to say to all women listening to this, when you need a cardiologist, it's too late. So find one now. Mm -hmm. I took care of myself all of my life. I exercised, I ate carefully, I worked out, I moved, I did yoga, I meditated. Something happened to me. I had a series of tests and they came back pretty normal. I do have, uh, for my age, 62, I do have some heart, I do have some heart disease, but it is not abnormal and it's very typical for a woman my age. Yeah. Yeah. But I was put on medication. It's the lowest dose medication. And I am staying on it. I have a different cardiologist. I went to a woman who wasn't any better. And now my cardiologist is my primary care physician. Mm, Wow. (laughs) Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, I never wanted to have a story. Never. I didn't. And that led me to what I am doing now. Basically, when your body goes through menopause, you decrease estrogen in your body. A decrease in estrogen, estrogen protects your heart, protects your muscles, it protects your joints, it protects your bones. Estrogen is a hormone receptor all over your body. 
So basically, when you go through menopause, and I had been 10 years into menopause mm-hmm. by this time, when you have gone through menopause, and your body is depleted of estrogen, these things happen. Hmm. Yeah, you would think more cardiologist, because I end up, you know, I think one of my later questions, I talk about that, too, I end up, you know, because both my parents have heart issues. And I started my heart was beating fast. And I I just wanted to make sure everything was okay. And, you know, they did tests and said, everything's fine. Never said anything about menopause or, you know, they'd be educated in that, you know, since that affects so much of your body. Well, estrogen is such a tricky hormone, because if you have too much estrogen, it's also dangerous as well. It has to be a fine balance on that. And then I think from the time I was 31 on, I, my estrogen levels were three times higher than they should have been. So I spent about 15 years getting those back to normal. Mm-hmm. And then I hit menopause and I didn't have any estrogen. It went the complete opposite way. So it is a very, very tricky hormone and that you have to be careful with as well. So it is Absolutely. something, yeah, something you have to get tested and I, I, yeah, I do love how your website gives hope of having harmony in your body, mind, and spirit in this menopause stage. Can you explain how the body, mind, and spirit work together in menopause? Of course. So practicing self-compassion and prioritizing your self-care, seeking support with grace and resilience is pretty much our spiritual practice. And that's that's what it provides for us. But we also need data. <laughs> We need data. We cultivate a spiritual and mindful tools and the positive mindset. And when we gather data and interpret the data, we can create a wellness plan. Your mind, body, and spirit are, it's just a cycle. It's interlinked. It always is. And we create a plan not necessarily to eliminate stress, but to expand our capacity for stress. Mm. When we feel spiritually lost, we feel alone, we feel abandoned, we feel invisible. I speak to a lot of women every day who this time of their life, when they go through menopause, they start to feel invisible. Mm. Nobody listens to them. So many women say our healthcare system is not working for them. My male cardiologist telling me to stop doing behaviors that I don't even do. He didn't even talk to me. Yeah, he didn't even really have dialogue with you. Sounds like. No. And his assistant was standing there like with her mouth wide open. Like, I think she was embarrassed. Yeah. I think we need to have the complete normalize. We need to normalize what's happening and open ourselves up to the grace. We are transitioning. We're beautiful women. We're beautiful women. And we just have to open up to them. Yeah. Yeah, because it's such an overwhelming stage. I mean, for me, it does affect every area of your life. I feel like at work, it's more challenging because, you know, I have more brain fog Mm -hmm. and it's like, I don't even really want to learn. Like they keep pushing me like, we want you to learn this. And I'm like, I don't want to learn anything else right now. Like, I feel like my brain is taxed just doing what I know. And I'm not normally like that, you know, but it does affect, you know, every part of your life. It does. Yeah, you don't realize how depleted those hormones are once you hit menopause. And when one of them is isn't balanced, it just affects everything in you. And I noticed it more when I was, you know, a lot when I was younger. But now I just had an incident where my progesterone wasn't effective because it got too hot in the car. And after two to three weeks, I was having such severe brain fog. I knew something was off. And then I called my pharmacist and they're like, yeah, it's not working. You you need to come get get a new prescription. And I did. And within a couple of weeks, it was the brain fog was gone. I was having body aches. Like, mm-hmm. it's just crazy how you need them and they need to be balanced. So, yeah, I totally get it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So when I was researching this, it says menopause is defined as a point in time when you've gone 12 consecutive months without a menstrual period. It happens on average at age 52. It's a natural process that occurs when your ovaries stop producing reproductive hormones. Hormonal changes due to menopause can cause uncomfortable physical and emotional symptoms. Ask any woman that's experiencing that and they will tell you. I started trying to learn as much as I could and I found that even my racing heart issues 
can be linked to menopause. And just like you, I saw a cardiologist for it and they never ever mentioned menopause. I went away just thinking, well, okay, well, at least I, I know my heart's okay, but I wish they would have clued me and I would have looked into that, you know, getting more balance earlier because I am on hormones now, but I've only been on them about, I think it's not even been three months yet. So I feel like they're starting to get balanced. You know, I already feel improvement in a lot of areas, but I still feel like I have a, a long way to go. So I know you said you you had the heart related issue, which you talked about. Did you want to share any more about that experience or? Just that even though I did go to a female cardiologist, she did not ask at all about hormones. She didn't test me for hormones, nor did she. Well, what she did say was she thought I might have sleep apnea. Really? I don't have. Yeah. I've don't have sleep apnea. So they diagnose you with everything but menopause. Yeah. Well, that's what it, the, the diagnosis should have been. She did say this when I complained about the male cardiologist. She said that our healthcare system, and especially cardiovascular health, is based on tests from using men, not women. Really? Oh. <sighs> wow. It's 2022. This was only two years ago. Yeah, that's that's just crazy. Yeah. Well, let's go over what some of the signs of menopause are. You may be transitioning into menopause if you begin experiencing some or all of the following symptoms. And I think they call that perimenopause, right? Irregular periods or periods that are heavier or lighter than usual. Hot flashes, night sweats and or cold flashes, vaginal dryness that causes discomfort during sex, urinary urgency, a pressing need to pee more frequently. Difficulty sleeping, insomnia, emotional changes, irritability, mood swings or depression, dry skin, dry eyes or dry mouth, worsening premenstrual syndrome, PMS. Some people might also experience a racing heart, headaches, joint and muscle aches and pains, changes in libido, difficulty concentrating or memory lapses, weight gain, and hair loss or thinning. There are treatments available to help with symptoms of menopause, like hormone therapy, medication, or lifestyle adjustments. You offer customizable coaching sessions to help and support. Can you share some of the stages you talk about that can help? Right. So most research throughout the world, and sadly, the U.S. is lagging behind a lot of the research done in the world on menopause. I think that has a lot to do with our healthcare system, but most of those symptoms that you listed can be typically in three categories. There's vasomotor, sexual, and psychological. Now, approximately 30,000 women were researched and tested, and they were found, 30,000 women were found to have 12 or more symptoms, and they were very severe. And the most severe symptoms for them were weight gain, loss of libido, and fatigue. Mm. Now, what I do is I listen to women. I listen to them talk to me about their symptoms. A lot of women that come to me don't know where to go at first. So I direct them to, first of all, to get blood work done. Mm -hmm. yeah. That is critical. That yeah. is absolutely critical. I have a list of blood tests that women need to have done and must insist with their primary care physician or any doctor that will listen what needs to be done. They need complete lipid panels. They need total comprehensive metabolic panels. They need liver enzymes done, iron, ferritin, B12. They need all of these things done. So when I speak to women, the first thing I do is I ask them to get the blood test. After they get a blood test, then we sit down and I listen to women talk to me about their symptoms. And they are typically categorized into those three categories based on what those women say, based on how they feel and what they want. We do create a plan based on small daily habits that they can get used to, get into the rhythm of taking care of their bodies. We are inundated with ads for supplements. <laughs> Mm -hmm. They're inundated with ads that menopause doctors want you to try their supplements. And yeah. I don't recommend a lot of that. I recommend getting most of your vitamins and supplements from your nutrition. I work on a lot of other areas that we will get into, but recovery, rest, sleep, movement, 
diet. And I don't mean to go on a diet. I mean what your nutrition is, what you do need. You need women need DEXA scans to find out if their bodies are depleted of calcium, if they need they have a bone scan to see because estrogen protects your bones. There's a lot. It's a process. It really yeah. is. It is. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I want to stress that we can't shame ourselves into change. Yeah. Menopause is not something that we talk about. And many of my clients, I'm the first woman that they have really talked to about their symptoms. Mm. So some of the things we work on besides the blood work and then starting with nutrition is what is nutrition? How much protein does a woman need a day? How much fiber does she need a day? How many carbohydrates? How many fats? How much calcium? There's a lot of new research on phytoestrogens that yeah. really exciting and it's really good for women who can't do hormone replacement therapy. And there's also women with this weight gain that when our estrogen depletes, our estrogen receptors that are all over our body, there are two hormones that regulate hunger. Those hormones become out of balance. They are not in homeostasis. So women who experience severe menopause symptoms or not severe cannot tell when they're full. Mm -hmm. They don't have, so there's leptin and ghrelin, and those hormones tell us when we're full and when we're hungry. And those hormone receptors, estrogen, when it's out of balance, those two hormones aren't working. Mm -hmm. Right. So here's women, you know, being told, well, just eat till you're full. Well, some yeah. women can't regulate that. Yeah. It's very complex. Every woman is very different. Yeah, yeah definitely. Every woman is different. Every woman has a story. Yeah. And yeah, I appreciate what you do, though, because that's incredible that you help with, you know, the diet and what women in, in menopause need to be eating, because what I was eating back 10 years ago, maybe not what I need now. So that's, that's fantastic. Yeah, I don't correct. really think about that. No, we don't think about that. We think, oh, I, I was in great shape 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. And this is what I ate. <laughs> Boom. Yeah. I could get up. I could have that. I could... I could skip dinner and lose five pounds, or I could right. skip dinner and get into that dress. Yeah. What's happening to me? I can't, yeah. do, I can't do that anymore, nor should we. Yeah. Yeah. Cause my son's a personal trainer and he's 22 and he's a chef too. And he'll always just tell me I need to do this, this, and this. And I'll be like, well, that doesn't work for me. And I said, maybe you need to study more about women my age. I said, cause if you could help people my age, <laughs> you'd be uh, pretty busy. <laughs> So, right. Yeah, absolutely. Women have their nutritional needs change. A lot of women that I've worked with were on keto. And that strict keto might have worked for them when they were younger. And it worked for them for about, you know, six months or so. Mm -hmm. But there comes a time where the cholesterol, the fat, I know your body's, and I'm doing air quotes for people at home, is supposed <laughs> to become fat adapted, but yeah. you know, yeah. we don't, that doesn't really happen yeah. when you're at a certain age. Right. And there is such a thing as green keto, which a lot of women find much more available to them. So it's just much more fruits, much more vegetables good quality organic proteins, that works better. No highly processed foods, that in movement, you know, the guideline. So the green oh. keto is like cutting out the fat. I mean, you don't need to add like I know with keto, it's just a ton of fat, like the good. Right. Fat. So it's, you're saying it's, green keto doesn't have all the fats, right? It doesn't have all the fats. And, and oh, wow, I like that. Green keto is, you know, chicken and salad. I can do it. That's what that's what I do. Salmon and I salad, chicken though, <laughs> and some rice or you know tuna or you know it's a protein. A you have soluble and insoluble fiber with your protein. You have fat, but it's not animal fat. Okay. So and just to help some people don't understand. You know what big thing is portion size? Like what is portion size? Yeah, I don't know what that is. <laughs> right, protein is. 
protein is the palm of your hand. Yeah, I've always um, heard that. Yeah. Right. Fiber, vegetables, vegetable is your fiber, can be your fiber, and that's about a fist. A carbohydrate's about a cupped fist, okay. a cupped hand. And a fat is about the size of your thumb. And you need to have a balance of everything. Yeah. That's and good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's helpful information. Yeah, thank you. So it's absolutely normal for women during the menopause transition to experience some brain fog, which is why the term menopause brain has gained traction recently. Understanding the connection between menopause and brain fog can help you make sense of what's going on. Hormonal fluctuations play a key role along with other menopause symptoms and stressors associated with midlife that contribute significantly to mental fuzziness and difficulty concentrating. I know that was a big factor for me because I audit travel tickets all day long. And if I'm feeling really foggy, it just, it makes it really challenging. So can you share any approaches you have for that, for the brain fog and all that like fatigue, brain yes. fatigue? Yeah. <laughs> we we want to know, we want to know. We want to know. That's a, that is a big one. And yeah. um, we're laughing about it, but it's, again, it's serious. Yeah. And estrogen protects our brain. And most research that's been done on mild cognitive decline or any cognitive decline has typically been done on men. Blood tests. There are blood tests that are available to you to see if your menopause brain or your brain fog is within normal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is normal. Yeah. And I also want to not scare women because we get to a certain age and we become overwhelmed with our life. Our life, we are not meant to multitask. We're not, but we were as young women, all we did was multitask all day. Yeah. There comes a time in our lives when we're just done multitasking. Yeah. Yeah. So again, normalizing what is brain fog. So really understand where you are experiencing this brain fog. Do you walk into a room, not know why you're there, or do you walk into a room and then go, oh, okay, now I remember. How many times a day do you lose your keys, your sunglasses, your glasses are on your head, but you lost them? These things happen. It's when you don't, it's serious when it affects your life, when you don't pay your bills, when you, you know, seriously, when, when your friends are saying, you know, we were supposed to do this and you weren't there. Mm. Some of the biggest things that help, I believe in nutrition. Now I'm not a nutritionist. I'm a nutrition coach and there's a difference, but I believe that nutrition limiting highly processed foods, limiting ultra processed foods, limiting sugar, limiting alcohol, limiting foods that don't nourish you, and then using more movement in your day. Mm -hmm. I, sit, I sit a lot. I work with women a lot on Zoom. So I sit every hour and a half or hour if I can, I get up, I walk around the block. Now I don't do that in the summer. I have a weighted vest that I use. It helps with my bone density. So exercising, doing squats, I lift weights in my office. I have bands here. I have, you know, a foam roller. I roll, I release tension in my body. And I find that when I release this tension in my body, and when I help other women do that, I don't want to say brain fog goes totally away, but I believe the symptoms decrease. Yeah, they do. I, think I, don't, so I don't think you can ever say, well, I don't have brain fog anymore. I think you can say, though, it is not as bad. I have it more under control. Habits, doing daily habits and getting into daily rituals help tremendously. Writing things down in your diary. I have a planner that is full. I go over it the night before and the morning of. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I agree. And some days I think are better than others. Like some days I don't, right. I seem really sharp, probably depending on how my sleep was. Mm -hmm. And the brain fog is much better. Right. And then there's and some days where I have to, uh, maybe I, I should, I need to go for a run because it will help with get the blood flow going and and the brain fog will lessen. So. Rest and recovery and sleep are extremely important. And as women age, we lose sleep. Yeah, uh, We don't sleep as well because some women do wake up with the night sweats, hot flushes, chills, 
anxiety. I woke up and I did, when I was a young woman, I did tell this to my doctor. I felt like somebody was plugging my finger into a socket. So I, and they said, oh, you have anxiety. And they tried to give me some anti-anxiety pills. And I'm like, no, I don't, I don't, I don't think it's anxiety because I only have it at night. Yeah. Again, women are prescribed antidepressants much more than men. And there is such a thing as low mood estrogen. So if you think of women who have postpartum depression, that's a little bit more serious. But when your estrogen decreases, your mood swings and your mood decreases. But when left unchecked, or if not, if you don't understand what you're going through, it can become extremely severe. Mm. And for women who can't take hormone replacement therapy, there are serotonin reuptakers that are very effective and people, women don't need to be on them for a long period of time. Well, that's good to know. So it just helps balance it. Is, yeah. that, like, is that like a vitamin? Uh, no, it's like a serotonin reuptaker. There's so many different ones on the market. I won't even. Yeah. That's I think that's a conversation with a, with a doctor, a medical doctor yeah. but just to put it out there for women to talk to their doctor if they can't take hormone replacement therapy. Right. Okay. Yeah, and I think like you were saying, I think when I do, even when I do yoga more, because I, I, I know if I have a really busy week, that, that's usually what goes is my yoga time. And then I do get more foggy. So I think there is some connection to that. That's yeah. a very good point. Another thing women say is, Oh, I've been feeling a lot more stressed lately. Well, when was the last time you sat quietly? When was the last time yeah, you yeah. moved yeah. We, or prayed or whatever? And they'll mm -hmm. say, oh, so we take for granted how great we're feeling when we're doing it all. But when right. we're doing it, then we've, oh, yeah, I haven't done anything for a while. Yeah, long. exactly. Wow. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, and I have, I have a thyroid disease too, so... Hashimoto's from the abuse. And I just forget when I'm feeling good, I forget about how then when I have like, when I'm feeling horrible, I go, boy, I wish I felt good again. You know? No, that, so, that, you're absolutely right. Yeah. Um, we take for granted when we're feeling mm -hmm. great. And then we mm -hmm. just stop doing oh, mm -hmm. what we're doing. Yeah. It's work. The older we get, the more we have to work. It, it is a lot of work. Yeah. So how's menopause diagnosed? Well, typically, okay, so menopause is one day in a woman's life. Menopause is the one day that you have gone 12 months without a period. So it's yeah, I heard one somebody day. say that and I'm like, yeah, you know, we don't went through, that term, but. <laughs> yeah, and I went through that three times. I didn't have my period for a year and then I got it and then I didn't have mm. it for a year and then I got it. I didn't have it for a year and then I got it. Lucky you. <laughs> I was very lucky. Um, <laughs> no, so, I I didn't have to go through that. Yeah, too. I didn't either. No, it's just done. It's just gone and done. <laughs> you, you're so fortunate. Uh, so, so when you haven't had your period for over a year and you're to diagnose menopause, typically you would want to have a blood test. Now there are tests, saliva tests, blood tests, and women are spending a lot of money, which hormones fluctuate. So you want to wait until after you have your last period. You want to wait a year. It drives women crazy. And what they do is, and they spend money on all of these tests, but your hormones are still fluctuating. So it won't give you a very accurate test. When your estrogen is between zero and 30, you are in menopause. Mm. That's all we got. Yeah. All these symptoms can happen for years and years before, and they can happen for years and years after. So symptoms don't necessarily diagnose menopause. They give you an idea of where you're at, but finding that blood test, getting all that blood work done and finding your estrogen uh, level is between zero and 30. Now, can okay. that score vary? I know labs, lab scores are different. So you say the zero and 30, is there a, like, say a different lab that could have a that's, different score? Yeah, that's the typical range. And I don't even like saying typical when it comes to menopause. I don't like saying typical. There isn't no typical. Right. <laughs> <laughs> there isn't. We're all, we're all yeah. wonderfully unique. <laughs> yeah, we are. So there are many things that can help with menopause symptoms. Hormone therapy is one of them. 
Hormone therapy is a type of medication used to treat menopausal symptoms brought on by changes in hormone levels. It works by releasing estrogen into the body and is available in many forms, including pills, patches, pellets, rings, and topical creams and gels. The term you'll commonly hear for all these medications is hormone replacement therapy or HRT. I just began using that. It's been a little over two months now, and I've already felt a big improvement in a lot of my symptoms. What are your thoughts on, on hormone replacement therapy? I think hormone replacement therapy is the answer for a lot of women. It isn't necessarily something you can take for the rest of your life, because if you think about it, you are going to be in menopause for maybe 30 years. So typically women are on hormone replacement therapy after, so in postmenopause for between five, seven, eight years. It isn't recommended for any woman over 60 or who's been through menopause or has been in menopause for over 10 to 12 years. That's what most doctors recommend. So then what do you do? You just don't do any therapy after the 10 years? Well, you can do, there are some therapies patches, gels. Yes. I'm talking more about the injections, the sublingual estradiol, but patches, creams, gels, a vaginal ring, they can be lifesavers for a lot of women. But a lot of women can't take hormone replacement therapy due to cancer, due to family history. Um, So again, that's a conversation with them. I Mm -hmm. personally could not take it, not because of family history, But because I did try it and I had horrific side effects. Mm. Oh, you did from hormone replacement therapy? Oh, I had, my side effects were worse than what I was experiencing. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. And so again, all women are different. So I just quit taking them. And again, I am a (laughs) menopause coach and I'm (laughs) working on myself. And it's really interesting to find out that the pillars that I work with on women actually do work for me without taking any hormones. That's Mm. great. Yeah. Yeah. That's good to know that you don't have to do the hormone replacement therapy. A lot of women can't. A lot of women can't, but women who can, I still have clients who use hormone therapy for a lot of their symptoms, but there are still some symptoms that estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone. So it depends on yeah. Some women take all of them. Some women just take one. Some, you know, yeah. it depends on what women take. So based on that, some they still have some symptoms. I mean, even my kids, like my my son was born with a thyroid condition and he has to have his hormones checked. And he doesn't do the testosterone because he's young and he's worried about his heart, but he'll, you know, the, there's certain foods he can eat to help with that. So right. I, I totally get what you're saying. And after I had my third kid, he was really big. He was like 10 or 11 pounds. So he threw, my hormones were messed up from the time I was 30 years old. So for me, I've had to make sure that they were balanced my entire life. So I do think it's important for anyone to just check them. And then there's, I think when you're younger, it's best to do the most natural ways, but just to understand that right. the balance that needs to be with your testosterone, your, well, your adrenals, your testosterone, your progesterone, your estrogen, all, all of that and that balance and understanding. But I like when you talked about when you're hungry and when, you know, like a lot of times I, there were times where I was feeling full all the time and never wanted to eat. Like, I don't know what causes that, but I thought that was strange. That's leptin. So it's the satiate. You feel satiated. Yeah. Even without eating, I was feeling like that for a while. Right. And that is a hormonal imbalance. Okay. Well, that makes sense because I had a hormone imbalance. So (laughs) (laughs) yeah, yeah. I've spent like the last 20 some years trying to balance them. And then when I finally got them balanced, I went completely uh, a different direction. I'm like, okay, this is wonderful. (laughs) So yeah, I was having brain fog in my thirties. I think they gave me like a vitamin B6 or something back then. I don't remember what it was, but that, that sounds like what they would do. Yeah. It helped. Yeah. So, weight gain and menopause belly are very common, unfortunate symptoms of menopause. I can attest to that. Do you have some tips to combat that? <laughs> Please say you do. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody wants to know. All oh, listeners want to know. Well, like to be continued. Stay tuned for next week's part two. You don't want to miss it.
Thanks for tuning in to Hanging On To Hope. Check out our website, hangingontohope.org. There are resources on there, and if you would like to donate or volunteer, you can do that through our website. We are a brand new nonprofit, so we appreciate any and all support. And we thank you for listening. And until next time, keep hanging on to hope. We are evidence that there is hope and healing for you, and our passion is to help you find it too. So thanks for tuning in. Thanks for listening, everyone.